All right, so I'm at the junkyard right now, and originally I wasn't gonna film here, but like, here, just check this out. I found myself a motherfucking TI. I usually check like every day on row 52 to see if any E36ers show up at the junkyard, and I haven't been checking for a while, and I happened to check yesterday, and this one's been here since July 20th, but get this. So I found the taillight that I need, because mine is obviously smashed out from when I hit Cameron. <laughs> Granted, this one is a little fucked up, but it's better than the one that I have right now. And when I went to just go open the trunk, it's got struts that work. So I'm also gonna take these struts with me. And then look at that, look at that, up there. There's also a really shiny regulator. All right, so the trunk struts have been secured. And I decided to take a look up at the hood. And sure enough, these struts up front also work. So I'm about to have fully working struts, baby. I'm gonna pop off those front struts and then I think we're gonna get to getting that window regulator out. Alrighty, so I didn't end up filming myself taking out the window regulator, but here's what we ended up getting from the junkyard. I got all four of the shocks for the hood and the trunk. I got the taillight and I got the nice regulator. The regulator that I have on the driver's side of the TI still works, but it's a, it's a little scuffed. I don't know if you'll be able to tell, but down here, this lower arm got bent pretty out of shape. And no matter how hard I tried to adjust this thing, like it would just never stay attached to the window. So that's why I got that regulator. That regulator seems to be in really good shape. It seems like it's almost like pretty new. And I wasn't even able to like snap it out of the window. I had to literally slide it off the rails. So that tells me that this thing should sit pretty securely on the window and we shouldn't have any problems. The first thing I really wanna do though is get these shocks in because I'm just so excited to finally have a trunk and a hood that just stay up on their own that I don't have to deal with. Because surprisingly, the rear hatch on these TIs, it weighs an absolute ton. And I'm just tired of dealing with it. So let's get those on. Oops. That one's out. Yeah, you can see this sits just absolutely just blown. Oh, yeah. Yo! Yo! Ah! Look at that! It stays up! Yo! I got a working trunk! God damn it. I haven't been this excited in a long time. That's awesome. Of course, the hood wasn't, like, such a necessity because I usually can just, like, lay it back on the windshield like that. But... I have had instances where I'm working in the engine bay with the hood like that and a little gust of wind just catches the hood and I get smacked in the head, which is no fun. I forget, do these go with the fat side on the bottom or fat side on the top? Hmm. Snap her on. And snap her on. And boom! Look at that! Now I have a hood that just stays up like a normal hood. Oh my goodness. And then just, you just open it back up and just... Oh, that noise, the little uh, I just feel so good. Love that. Okay, cool. Now we're gonna move on to the part that people really hate doing on these cars, which is the window regulator. Oh, and then just like, it kind of just pops off. Oh yeah, I forgot. Cause whenever I put my window down, the arms on the bottom act like a, like a, like a prop so that the window can't slide down into the door. Uh, but obviously I forgot about that. And now the window is all the way down in the door. Yeah, you can really see how scuffed this arm is. Like that thing is super bent. So I gotta think about how I want to do this. Roughly, oh, uh, maybe not. Fuck, fuck. Oh no. Okay, yeah, this is gonna be really annoying. Boom, okay, sick. Both clips in the rails. That plastic felt like it kind of chipped off a little bit, but that is okay. Now, where do I go from here? Snug that down a bit. And everything should stay roughly in place. There's so much weird geometry going on with this window right now. Oh, my arms are getting tired already. I'm gonna hold the window up with my head. This is big brain strategies, head too small. Head don't grip. There's definitely a right way to do this. I can guarantee you that this is not the, the right way. You know, maybe my best bet would have been to uh, put the plastic clips in the window and then slot these back in. But we're gonna just keep trying to do it this way because I don't feel like going through the hassle of taking those back out. And I am willing to go through the hassle of trying to do it my way. Oh, holy. Oh. oh. Okay. Oh, dude, they're all starting to line up. This is great. Oh, this is fantastic. The nut. 
Oh yeah. Okay, now everything's lined up. It's just gonna be a matter of tightening everything down, adjusting this arm on the left, and then lubing up the rails, I hope. I hope. Okay, I'm gonna go very slow. No fucking way. You're telling me it just worked just like that? Let me put it back up a little bit. Ooh. Okay, so it is starting to want to do some funny stuff. So you can see how the window started to come off the side over there. And if you look, it's wanting to come off the rail on the window right there. So there are definitely some adjustments that I need to make. A little longer than a few minutes later. I did it. Look at that. Essentially, the issue that I was having was that the window wanted to keep coming out of the rail on the side of the door that's closest to the car. So it would like come off the rail and then it wouldn't want to like go up correctly and the window would want to push inward towards the car. So I ended up just, just having to tilt this arm down as far as it would go. And that kind of like kicks the window this way and gets that bottom corner of the window to stay in that rail over there. It definitely took some trial and error. Probably took me like five different adjustments of that arm to actually get it to work right. But I mean, that works. So now it's gonna be time to tackle this tail light. Now I could just take the tail light that I just got and just plop it in. But I think I want to take out this tail light and then I wanna try and get this dent out a little bit because like it's pretty gnarly. Like that's a pretty gnarly dent. And I should be able to just access that dent from right there. So I'm thinking if I just get like a rubber mallet or like just any sort of hammer, I should probably be able to pop it out somewhat easy. It's not gonna be perfect, but it should hopefully look better than it does right now. All right, so unfortunately, I couldn't find my rubber mallet. So we're gonna have to use this hammer. And then I'm thinking, I'm gonna just kind of put this piece of wood up there and then just start smacking. And hopefully it shouldn't leave any crazy indentations on the other side. Oh, you know, it's kind of doing something. Well, you know, what if I, oh, hey. That was a pretty significant pop. Did you hear that? Oh, yo, hey, that's pretty good. Oh, that's pretty good. Let's see if I can get a little bit more. Maybe my foot will act as like a nice flat surface for this to get like some of the contour back. Oh, dude, that looks so much better. So like from down below, it's super ripply, but it's not like all impacted in anymore like it was before. Like, look at that. That's a big difference from before. Yeah, like I said, like it's pretty ripply, but overall, like it looks a hell of a lot better. Part of me is halfway tempted to just take this off and see how bad the damage is on the underside. Cause like just squeezing it and stuff, like, yeah, there's like a chunk missing up here. Like this is flapping a little bit, but it seems like it's all in like one piece. So I don't think anything will necessarily fall apart if I take this off. All right, so I was able to get all the tape off. There's still like a fair amount of this goopy shit on there, but unfortunately we don't have anything strong enough to be able to get all that off right now. But I mean, as of right now, compared to the old taillight, like even though this one's a little busted up on top, it looks a hell of a lot better than that. Boom, and just like that, we got most of that nasty dent out and we have a taillight that looks a hell of a lot better. Now, realistically, I could have gone online and bought a brand new one, but from what I remember, they were like 50 bucks at minimum for I think a single tail light. I could be wrong, but I mean, this one was 15 bucks at the junkyard, so it's like I can get by having something like that, especially a tail light, which is probably gonna get smashed out again at some point anyway. So I figure I'll save a little bit of money now, and then maybe in the future, I'll get like some nice like Euro style ones that just have like the clear tops and they look really good. For now, I'm pretty satisfied. <sighs> All right, so it's been like a little over a week since I filmed that last clip. Uh, your boy got Cobra. Thankfully, I'm over it now. I just got out of isolation today. I got the clear. So it's time to get back working on the BMW. So the last thing I actually want to do in this video is do something about these headlights. Honestly, at this point, I'm a little bit over like the fully tinted headlights. It makes it nearly impossible to drive at night. And at this point, I just honestly don't think it looks that good. So while I was at FD earlier this month, I got the chance to look at Rome Charpentier's car up close and personal. And his car actually gave me a really good idea. I'll throw up a picture right now of Rome Charpentier's car. He has probably one of like the best looking cars in FD right now. I absolutely love the car. The green on the pink just looks fucking awesome in my opinion. But the one thing that I noticed when I was looking at his car is that he has these angry eye headlights. 
And actually, funny story, I actually got the chance to talk to Rome. And I went up to him, and I was like, hey, where'd you get your headlights? And he, he was, like, signing one of my buddy's things. I don't remember what it was, but he was just, like, signing my buddy's things. And it took him, like, five seconds to respond. He was just looking at it. He's like, you got an E36? I was like, yeah, I got an E36. And he's like, they already have the headlights. I was just kind of dumbfounded. I was like, what do you mean? He was like, well, when you go to junkyards and you pick up E36 headlights, they're always super hazy, impossible to see out of, and they just suck. So what I did is I just cut them off. So that's what we're gonna do today. We're just gonna be cutting off these front plastic lenses and we're gonna try and give the, the headlight a bit of like, a, like an angry eye look here. So I'm gonna pop out these headlights and I'll kind of give you guys a better idea of what I'm thinking about. All right, so this is what I have going so far. I definitely went a little bit overkill on the tape, but that's just kind of for a vis visual representation of what I'm gonna be doing. So anything that's not taped up, is gonna get cut out. Now, to make sure I got these really even, I ended up just measuring from the top down an inch and a half on both of these, and then I just had it go up to the corner on either side. That way they are completely symmetrical. So I'm gonna kind of take this slow. I'm just gonna be using a Dremel. I figured that would be the best way for me to make sure that I get a pretty clean edge round. Yeah, maybe I'll just try my angle grinder. I think I've got all of it except for that one corner. Boom, and just like that, we got one angry eye done. Yeah, as you can see, like, that's glass underneath there. Honestly, I didn't even have any idea that that was actually glass underneath there. Now that we have this one done, we can move on to the next one, and hopefully this one will go a little bit smoother. So I got both headlights finished up, all cleaned up for the most part. And I gotta say, turned out pretty damn good. Look at this mean girl. So the one thing I did have to do, the cut marks right here turned out like really white because of the melted plastic. So I ended up just going over it with some black spray paint. But you can see like some of the edges, like they're not perfect. I could definitely go over them and clean this up a little bit more. But like from a few steps back, like it looks freaking mean. I'm honestly tempted to go back to the smoked corners or at least like clear corners because now the the amber corners just, they pop too much and they kind of look like they're fighting with the headlights. Same with this fog light. I think I'm actually gonna end up taking out that fog light because I've never had one on both sides and it honestly just looks kind of goofy. Fog light out. I ended up having to break this bracket. Granted, this bracket was already broken. So like, I don't really care. And that's kind of why I broke it in the first place, but I'd say without that fog light in, yeah, that looks a lot better. It was just kind of weird having that fog light down in the corner. It was almost like a big old zit on the front of the car and it just didn't, didn't quite look right, you know? And you know, actually without that fog light there, the corner lights don't seem as like clashy, you know? I think the yellow down there was definitely throwing me off. It's crazy, you don't even realize like what's underneath the housing most of the time because it's just all nasty and foggy. But yeah, you got these nice ass glass lenses. Granted, these are probably gonna get shattered at some point while drifting because, you know, it's just exposed glass and a lots of stuff flies up from other cars in front of you while drifting. But that's, that's something that we'll figure out later on when it happens. What is making that noise? Oh, the Dremel was going. That's not good. Silly Dremel. So I know we didn't do anything like super crazy in this video. It was honestly just a lot of quality of life things and some minor exterior mods. But you know, it's always the quality of life things, just the small things in a car, like working hood shocks, working trunk shocks, a working driver's side window, you know, it's those type of things that really help you enjoy a car a hell of a lot more. But anyways, I think that's gonna do it for this video, guys. I hope you all enjoyed. I hope you all have a fantastic day and I will see you in the next one.